story of Robin Hood, and I know all about it, because I was there and helped Robin. I was there too, and I'll help too. I'll help too. I'll tell about Maid Marian's part. I want to tell too. We can't have too many tellers. It will get confusing to the listeners. So just don't butt in on my story too much. I'll begin now. Robin Hood and his merry men were living in Sherwood Forest. They had left their homes and were hiding there to escape Bad Prince John and his terrible tax collector, the Sheriff of Nottingham. Every once in a while, they would rob the prince and the sheriff and give the money back to the people. Alma Dill, who is roving minstrel, that's a kind of songwriter, who sings about current events, wrote a song called Oodalolly. That kind of begins the story. <laughs> Robin and Little John had a close shave, and Robin even got an arrow through his hat. But then they heard music coming from the road, and hiding themselves in the bushes alongside, they saw a big procession come by. At the end was a royal coach, with Prince John and Sir Hiss, his advisor, inside counting the money they had collected as taxes from the poor. Robin and Little John decided this was too good a chance to miss, and so they dressed up like lady fortune tellers, and Prince John stopped the parade to get his fortune told. While Robin was telling the prince's fortune, Little John stole the solid gold hubcaps and bored a hole into the royal treasure box and took all the money. And they got away with it, too. And Prince John and Sir Hiss wound up in a mud puddle because the wheels of their carriage fell off. No hubcaps, you see? Prince John was very mad and offered a huge reward to anyone who could catch Robin Hood, but nobody did. Now is when I come into the story. It was my birthday. My mother had given me a gold farthing as a gift. But just as she did, the bad old sheriff of Nottingham came rushing into our house and took my gold coin. After the sheriff left, a blind beggar in a ragged cape came into the room. Suddenly, the beggar threw off his cape, and we saw it was Robin Hood. He gave my mother some money, but more important, he gave me his hat and his bow and arrow. That was the best birthday present I ever had. 
So my sister and Tagalong went rushing outside to try the bow and arrow. This is where I come into the story. Yeah, me too. Yeah, me too. Yeah, but you were always way behind trying to keep up. Well, I can't help it if I'm littler than everybody. Let me tell it like it was. The first time I shot an arrow, it went high in the air and over the wall and into the garden in front of Prince John's castle. I thought that was dumb. Well, maybe, but it sure led to some important things in the story. I decided I had to have my arrow back, so I sneaked under the gate and went to get it. This was the scary part. I wasn't scared. If it had been Prince John in that garden and Stiff made Marion and Lady Clark, he probably would have cut off your head. But it wasn't Prince John. You were lucky. Stop interrupting. I want to tell the story straight. Maid Marion and Lady Cluck were glad to see us. And Lady Cluck and I had a fake duel, and I killed her. Not really. Then I told Maid Marion I liked to show her Sherwood Forest. She said it was the usual thing for the hero. That was me to kiss his fair lady, but I said that was sissy stuff. That was really funny. Your face got so red. Yeah, red. Oh, be quiet. I want to go on with the story. Prince John was really smart in about Robin Hood, so he set up a trap. He announced a big archery contest, at which Maid Marin would give a kiss to the winner. Of course, Robin couldn't resist going, so he disguised himself as a stork, and Little John dressed up like a duke, and they went. Naturally, Robin Hood won, but when he went to claim his prize, Prince John recognized him and had his guards grab Robin. But Little John was wise to the plot. And holding the knife against the prince's back, he forced Prince John to order Robin freed. Then there was a terrible fight, and Lady Cluck and Little John and all Robin's friends took on the prince's guards, while Robin and Maid Marian slipped off into the woods together. They were falling in love. That's what they were doing. Yeah, love. It was beautiful as they walked through the woods. The moonlight was shining on the waters of the stream. Mush. And as they looked into each other's eyes. They heard a beautiful song. Life, it seems like only yesterday. You were just a child at play. Now you're all grown up inside of me. Oh, how fast those moments flee! Once we watched a lazy world go by. Now the days seem to fly. Life is brief, but when it's gone, love goes on and on. By the time Robin and Maid Marian got back to the Sherwood Forest hideout, all the merry men were back from the big fight, and the party was going on. Nothing. 
song became such a big hit all over Nottingham that the sheriff himself and Sir Hiss started singing it as they counted the tax money. But when Prince John heard them, he really blew his top. He ordered the taxes on the poor people to be tripled or quadrupled, and if they couldn't pay, they were to be thrown in jail. It wasn't long before almost everybody in town was in jail. But the final straw was when the sheriff of Nottingham took money out of the poor box at Friar Tuck's church. And when the good friar complained, he was thrown into jail too. Now Prince John cooked up another plot. He would arrange to hang Friar Tuck, knowing that Robin Hood would try to rescue him. Then his men would grab Robin, and Prince John would hang them both. But Robin got wind of the plot. I never knew how he found out. Alan Adele told him, you're not even a good assistant storyteller. So Robin and Little John decided to break into the palace jail and let all the people out, and at the same time steal all Prince John's tax money. They were able to fool the sheriff and his dumb guards, Nutsy and Trigger, and get the jail open. But getting the money wasn't too easy, because Prince John kept all of it in his bedroom. He practically slept on a bed of money bags. But Robin climbed up into the prince's tower room and fixed up a kind of laundry line pulley. He attached the bags of coins to the pulley and sent them winging down to the jail, where all the people could grab them and carry them out to the palace courtyard. Oh, that Robin Hood. He's so handsome and brave. Be quiet. This is the best part of the story. Well, and get on with it. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. So all the bags of gold, except one, were on the way to the people. But the last one broke open. The noise of the falling coins woke up the prince and Sir Hiss. They rushed out to the windows and called out their guards. And Robin was trapped. The only place he could go was up. So he climbed up to the very top of the castle tower. But then the guards set fire to the castle, and there was poor Robin, surrounded by flames. Now the only way to go was down, to take the long jump down into the water of the moat around the castle. He finally jumped and disappeared into the water. His hat came floating up to the top, but no Robin. And Prince John and Sir Hiss were jubilant, while Little John and all the people were very sad, thinking that Robin Hood had drowned. But he was a crafty fox, that Robin. He was swimming underwater down the moat to safety. When he came up, you bet there was a celebration. I like the happy endings the best. I'm not finished yet. During the celebration in Sherwood Forest, King Richard, the rightful ruler of England, showed up back from the Crusades. He immediately put Prince John and the Sheriff and Sir Hiss in jail and decreed that Robin would be a nobleman. Robin and Maid Mirren got married and lived happily ever after? Yes, that's right, happily ever after. <laughs>